And I, I do want to start. I mean, you've got a long view on on this uh, on this sector, uh, and it does. It's more popular than we've ever seen it. There's a, a record amount of capital sitting in SPACs. Um, so before we get to the specifics of yours, big picture, what do you think is going on here, and what will it take to unleash some of that capital into the market? Yeah, I mean, we've been at this since 2007 and uh, have closed, owned of only two teams that have actually closed four SPAC mergers. And for that whole time, we have believed that SPACs for certain companies are the best ways for them to access the public markets. It's a very flexible vehicle that enables the companies to better tell their story when they're, when they're talking to the capital markets. And so we've been obviously believers and evangelists for this for a long time. It feels like in 2020, the world caught up to us. And, and as a result, SPACs are, as we know, top of mind for everyone. Every corporation, every boardroom, every CEO is thinking about SPACs as an option. So not only are there more companies who are open to the discussion, but there's much more better companies, higher quality companies who are now seriously thinking about this as an alternative. Your fourth uh, was with Nesco Holdings, so basically, you know, you were involved in utilities and end car rail solutions and, and so on. What, what kind of industry area are you looking at for this? Yeah, so we've always been opportunistic growth, and we feel like you need to have a wide aperture to find growth. So we've been in expedition travel and uh, enterprise software. We started a mortgage rate uh, with our first one at the bottom of the financial crisis, and then Nesco, as you manage, provides rental equipment for infrastructure and markets, which are extraordinarily attractive and growing end markets as we repair the grid and build 5G networks and new rail networks. So for us, it's always about growth and it's always finding a company in a situation where the SPAC will transform the business, where it will enable the company to accelerate and catalyze its growth and value creation. And that's the same approach we're going to take with Capital Five. So make a distinction for us then, uh, just in terms of the style, not all SPACs are the same. Yours, um, I, I would say, is a hands-on, um, kind of working with a, a management team, uh, being fairly strategic. Uh, could, would you differentiate between that and a more passive uh, type of a SPAC, which looks for opportunities, but, but it's a little more hands-off? Focus in one industry, uh, and, and that strategy can work. We feel more comfortable being able to cast a wide net um, and have a wide funnel and be able to look, look across sectors. And then, as you said, our strategy is not to run the businesses, but to be management's closest partners, to roll up our sleeves and work side by side with them, not just in through getting the deal done, which we do, but then for the long term. And in fact, we still to this day are deeply involved in the companies that we invest in created through our SPACs five, 10 years ago. Mark, you know, is it a dangerous time? Is, are, is there too much financing in, in the SPAC area now? I mean, you've obviously been involved in SPACs for, you know, 13, 14 years, but you're also, you know, a venture capitalist and, you know, you're in, in politics and, and you're in a lot of areas. Does it worry you at all that the SPAC explosion has happened? Yeah, I mean, the net net, I think, is positive. Clearly, there's a lot out there. I don't believe that everyone will be successful and even find a deal, much less find a good deal. I think that's for sure going to be the case. And in fact, when we started this, there was a mini SPAC boom in 2007 and 2009. During that period, the structure was a lot less user friendly, but half of those 90 didn't actually get deals done. I think it'll be a higher percentage here, but not everyone's going to be successful. Again, though, I go back to the fact that because it's become so mainstream, because people are talking about it so much, there's just such a wider universe of high quality companies who are open to it. And I think that's a real positive. The returns in the SPAC market this year have been extraordinary. We just got off the roadshow, and the funds who invest solely in SPACs are having unbelievable years, 50, 60, 70 percent returns this year because the product has been so well received and because people are finding good companies to merge into. So net-net, I think it's a tremendous positive, but like in any capital market, not everyone's going to be successful. And I guess I want to name names a little bit here uh, because, you know, when we think about kind of signs that a market may be very hot, um, I don't think you have to look further than Tontine, um, Ackman SPAC, $4 billion, lots of speculation, lots of enthusiasm, not so much uh, to, to see so far. W when do you get cautious about uh, some types of SPACs? What would, what would be a red flag for you? Yeah, I mean, Bill, Bill and I have been friends for decades, and I think he's you know, terrifically smart. I think what he did with Tontine 
was very innovative, and he did do a great job of aligning uh, people's interests. He is of a size uh, where there are not a ton of private companies he can go after, and I think that's the trade-off. Um, you know, assuming he finds something, I'm sure it'll be a good company, and it will be a really significant transaction and public company that comes out the other side. Our approach is really to try to stay on the smaller side, even when we've had the demand to raise more capital, mm -hmm. just to let us have a broader universe of companies that we can go after. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about SPACs is especially these days where the pipe market is so active, where you can raise capital side by side, there's virtually no upside to how big a company can be with any size SPAC. Yes. Um, it is harder to get smaller, and Mark, so that's the thing to think about. We're out of time, but I do want to mention the Washington City paper, which you own, but also the fact that you're so involved in, in tennis. And uh, I'm just curious, very briefly, if you could, your outlook for the tennis season next year. Yeah, I mean, the question on everyone's mind, are we going to play the Australian Open? I know Craig Tiley and his team are working hard um, to make that happen, um, trying to figure out a time in the calendar when it can happen, and working with the authorities in Australia who have been very tough on uh, immigration and quarantine for people coming in the country. I am sure they're going to get it done. And I know the tennis world is excited to go down under and, uh, and reconvene there. And uh, we're all waiting to hear the latest.